So now that our SAP Business One server has been installed, the next step that I'd like to go through is to apply the appropriate patches. So for those of you who are watching this session uh, and have not actually seen the process of uh, patching an SAP Business One system, I'd just like to take you through that. And of course, for those of you who have seen that, you can feel free to skip forwards uh, in the recordings. But in order to apply the patch, first thing I've done is I've gone and I've downloaded that patch from the Channel Partner Portal. And I have taken that patch and I have extracted it out. So I'll just go and open up the location where that patch is. And it's in my SAP downloads. And if I go into uh, this location, you'll see here I've downloaded and I've, I'm going to go in here and I will right click on the upgrade.exe and I will choose to run that as an administrator. Select my language. I've got a couple of choices. I can pre perform some pre-upgrade tests, which will just double check to make sure that everything is ready to go, or I can upgrade the Business One installation, and that's what I'm going to do in this particular case. And I'll say next. I'll spe specify my license server, and again, my License server is the same server that my SQL server is running on. And that's SBO demo CL SQLA and it's port 30,000. So then I'll say next. It'll just validate that. I'll put in my B1 site user password that you'll recall we selected uh, in the previous session. And I'll choose that. Again, in this particular instance, is just reminding you um, that you can connect to a remote server, but you cannot upgrade uh, those server components remotely. It has to be done on the local server, which is what I'm doing right here. So again, I'll put in that name. I'm going to use my SA username and password. I'll say next. We'll go ahead and validate that. List all of the components which need to be upgraded. And there you can see it's found all of those components. And then I'll choose next. And it's now asking me where do I want to do the backups because what the um, upgrade wizard is going to do, it's going to back up the databases before it starts the upgrade process. So in this case, I'm going to use the default SQL backup location. It's telling me that there's enough space to do that, which is good. So I'll say next. And then it's now going to go and do a pre-upgrade test on the common database. So I'll say next. And now it's started the upgrade process itself. So the first step is to upgrade the SAP Business One server tools. Again, I'll just put in my details. We'll choose custom. I always like to choose custom installs because it gives you more flexibility. Again, remember the SAP Business One server tools. Where am I putting all of these components? I am putting them on my G drive. I'm not installing anything on my C drive. I'm leaving that purely for my operating system. That's the other reason why I want to do a custom uh, install so it gives me the ability to go in and change that setting. We'll accept all those options because they're being picked up from the current installation. And then I'll say next. And we'll now let the server tools go through and run. That's now done, so I'll choose finish. And now it's going ahead and it's updating the common database. Now what you're going to notice here is that I haven't actually selected the uh, company databases to do an upgrade. 
normally I would do that. Normally I would select the company databases at the same time. But what I wanted to do here is just show you that you do have the flexibility to be able to uh, choose when you want to upgrade the company databases. Now, of course, an important point to note, as soon as the common database is upgraded, you cannot then utilize a company database which is not at the same patch level release. But I just wanted to give you an example and show you that you can actually do this in a couple of stages, a couple of passes. So it's up to you how you do it, I'm giving you the flexibility. So we'll let this upgrade run. So you can now see that it's testing the database to make sure it's ready to upgrade and then it will go ahead and run the upgrade. And the test has passed and now the upgrade is going through. So that's now succeeded. So it's moving on to our next step, which is upgrading the Outlook integration server. So really the upgrade process from here is just a matter of, uh, of going through and accepting each one of these upgrade steps in process. Now we're going to upgrade the SDK as well. Once again, I'm going to choose custom. And again, I'll choose to locate this on my G drive. That's now completed and we'll move on to our next step, which is upgrading the Business One integration framework. And you can see the upgrade process here is very, very simple as well. Answer a couple of quick questions and away it goes. So again, it's asking us just to reconfirm a couple of the settings for our Business One integration server, which I'll do. Again, it's testing the connection through to our Business One database. That's been confirmed successfully, so now the upgrade process will continue. And now we just need for the initialization of the content that's been uploaded and updated in the Business One Integration Framework to complete. We'll give this a couple of minutes. That's now completed and of course as you can see the integration upgrade has completed as well. So I'll choose finish. Just give it a second for it to recognize that that integration upgrade has completed successfully. And then you'll see that eight, uh, well actually not eight of nine, but nine out of nine of the components that we selected for upgrade have been upgraded successfully. Again, with minimal interaction, uh, and minimal intervention from us or from me uh, during the upgrade process. So I'll say next. And that's it, I'll choose finish. So again, uh, remember, what did I do? I upgraded the, the common database and I upgraded all of the core components. But I didn't upgrade the company databases. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll do that now. How do I do it? Again, same process. I'll just go and run the upgrade.exe again as the administrator. And what it's going to do this time is going to detect that those other components have been upgraded. Put in my password. And then I'll put in my SA password as well. And you can see now that it has not pre-selected all of these other components but it has selected my company databases. So I'll say next. 
and here's my two company databases I'll select that I want to upgrade those now I need to put in a super user user ID and password that is active on these uh, databases so I'll just go and do that now and you can see as soon as I put in a valid username and password that the, um, the, the fields actually turn white But you can see, if I look across here, you can see that the status is not ready. So why are they not ready? Well, they're not ready because those databases are currently being held open by another running process. And the process that I find tends to hold these open, I'll go in, we'll go into the um, services manager and I'll show you what those processes are. So I'll go, go in here from administrative tools and then go into my services. If we take a look, you'll see there is a number of SAP Business One related services running. And the one that um, I tend to find uh, causes this problem, let's stop the event sender service. So that's now stopped. And we'll choose refresh again. Okay, so there you go. You'll now see that these databases are now ready for upgrade. So the next step, obviously just click next. I'm gonna use the default SQL Server backup directory again, because of course it's going to back up these databases prior to running the upgrade. Just in case there's a problem, it can auto roll back. Now I'm going to run a pre-upgrade test, so we'll let that run. And then you'll notice, as I did before, I've left this uh, flag to automatically start the upgrade if the tests have passed. You can untick that so you have to specifically tell it to now go ahead and do the upgrade. But I, uh, I prefer to leave that, uh, leave that ticked. So let's let those tests run. And then the database upgrades will go ahead and will be ready to roll. The next step after that, of course, is to run SAP Business One for the first time on our SQL Server box. That will then upgrade the client as well. And then after that, I'm going to go in, I'm going to connect to my remote desktop server, and we're going to install SAP Business One. The first of our databases is now upgraded and the second database is going through the process of being upgraded. Once this is finished, that's it. We'll go and we'll run the Business One app and it will upgrade itself. So there you have it, our databases are upgraded. I'll now choose next and finish and we're now complete. The next step is for me to go and make sure these services are restarted. I'll just quickly do a refresh here and then I'll restart my event sender and I will restart the DI proxy service monitor and you can see that automatically then uh, restarts the DI proxy service. So all my services are back up and running I'll just close this window down. And I'll also close this window down. And let's go back in and we'll now run SAP Business One. Now here's a little hint. Um, when you run Business One and you wanna do the upgrade, my recommendation is don't just go and run it um, straight away like this. You wanna make sure when it does the upgrade, it does it with minimal, uh, with minimal challenges. So what I always like to do the very first time I run the Business One client after an upgrade is I go in here and I choose Run as Administrator. That way you'll make sure that the process, the automatic process that Business One goes through of recognizing that the client needs upgrading, deinstalling and installing the upgraded version all runs smoothly. So again, log in as a super user. And you'll then see we get our system message that the software version is not updated and it's going to be shut down to perform an automatic upgrade. So I'll say OK. And then you'll see the upgrade wizard then does the next step. 
downloads the updates from the Business One server. This is very, very quick because obviously it's both the same machine. Uh, and then it will deinstall SAP Business One and reinstall SAP Business One. And that's what you can see happening right now. So we're going to leave that sit again for a couple of minutes and then we'll see that Business One will get reinstalled. I'll come back in and run it for the first time. Then we're going to dive across, as I mentioned, we're going to look at our uh, remote desktop server. We're going to install the SAP Business One client on our remote desktop server. Then we're going to move on to one of the key components here, which is installing the SAP Business One Cloud Control Center. And now you can see that the upgrade has now been uh, completed successfully. So I'll say close. And we'll just log in and make sure everything's worked OK. Now, it's going in and it's going to ask me to, um, because this is the first time I've logged into a company, it's going to ask me to go and change my password. Because as you probably know, the default username and password for the demo company is manager and manager. And obviously, we don't want to leave it like that. So I'll do that. That's gone through successfully. And that's all fine. We're ready to go. We're not going to worry about these messages that are popping up down the bottom. That's just indicating that I'm still operating with a trial license. Uh, and I'm going to update the license in a couple of seconds. So uh, we'll just leave that as it is. But Business One is now up and running. So that's all fine. So I'll say yes to that. I want to close it down. So I'm happy with the fact that my upgrade's been done smoothly and successfully. So the next step is I want to go and I want to apply a license to my SAP Business One installation. Now there's a couple of ways I can do that. I can apply the license here uh, at my Business One server level, or I can wait till I've installed the Cloud Control Center and then apply a license there. I'm going to apply a license at this point. And of course, this is now where you have to, um, uh, if you are an SAP partner, of course, you reach out, you uh, go onto the partner portal and you will generate your license key for your system. And if you're an SAP Business One customer, you would then contact your partner and get them to generate the license key for you. So I'm going to go and do that now. But in order for me to do that, I need to look at my uh, service manager. And here it is. There's my service manager. And there's a couple of things that I need to, to retrieve to be able to go and generate my license key. So if I go in here and I look at my license manager, and I go and look at my settings, you'll see there is my hardware key. So that's the key component that I need to have. I need to have my hardware key so that I can go and generate that license key. So I'll go and do that right now. One more thing I'll do here is I'll just flag that to start when the operating system starts just to be on the safe side. I'll say OK. Then I'm going to come back in and I'm going to apply my license key.